Hello and welcome to week three of Aloha 24 March. For those of you who are watching for the first time, I have a painting challenge over on my Instagram channels, Aloha Watercolors and the Aloha Studios. We have a prompt every week. It's usually Hawaii related and we have a theme every month. And this month's theme is Native Hawaiian Flowers. And this week we're painting the native Hawaiian gardenia. So in Hawaiian it's called na'u, also known as nanu. I find this very interesting that there are so many things in Hawaiian where you have two different ways to call it. So yeah, it's one of the things. For example, there are multiple ways to say green as a color or blue depending if it's the forest, the ocean, the sky. So yeah, so much for that. How's everybody doing this weekend? Let me know. So hold on. Mm. I have a little bit of a sore throat, so I might have a cold coming. I'm not sure. So if my voice sounds a bit wonky today, I can blame it on that. And uh, let's not worry about it. I think it's just, uh, it's just gonna go away. Okay, let me show you what we're going to paint today. So the, um, the style is a little bit like the hibiscus we painted in the last live stream. Remember the Mauhau Hele? This one from last time with a, with a galaxy background. However, the technique today is totally different. So we're going to start with painting the background and leaving the flower white and then we're going to paint the leaves on top of the background. So this is really different from last time with the hibiscus where we just left the whole space with the hibiscus white. So it's a new technique for you guys and I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to turn the camera around because then I'm also going to be able to see your comments in the chat. All right. Let's turn the camera around and let's get painting. Okay, you know the drill. It's going to be shaky, shaky. Hold on. Here we go. And as always, please let me know how the audio is. If you can't hear me or if I should zoom in more closely or zoom out just let me know oops okay almost there almost there okay here we go and I have my iPad ready over here so I can look at the chat it's trying to open up hold on okay here we go Oh, hello everybody, Tracy, Alina, Sylvie, Debbie, mom is there, Irene, oh Irene, guys, I have to show you, oh my goodness, do you see, do you see Irene in the chat, um, Irene Moore, okay, she painted me, you guys, it's so exciting, let me show you. Okay, look at that. I mean, come on, I feel like royalty. I have somebody that painted me. <laughs> this is incredible, right? I mean, I mean, just the fact that she painted me, but then that she really caught me so well. Irene, danke schön. It is so incredible. I feel so honored. I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, you guys. Okay. So. Thank you, thank you, Irene. I just wanted to, to tell you guys because I just saw Irene in the chat, so I just could not not do it. Ah, yeah, man, so much excitement. Okay, <laughs> let me talk about um, today's supplies first. So, as you know, I have been using the same sketchbook for this challenge. It's made by Denise from Switzerland. Her handle is Art Moments. 
and it's a handmade sketchbook using Arche paper from France, also pronounced Arches, if you want to anglicize it. It's a very nice, heavy, cold press paper with a rough structure, so mm, beautiful. Then for paints, I'm going to use my own Aloha watercolors, but as always, feel free to use any paints you have at hand. Today, I'm going to use different shades of green, and I have a synthetic indigo here as well. Nice bright yellow. And this is the shimmer I'm going to use today. This is Kona Jazz Bronze Shimmer. Okay, let me just tell you the names of the colors in case you are painting with Aloha watercolors as well. So we're using Jade Vine. That's a Phthalo Turquoise. If you don't have Jade Vine, you can use Jungle. That's a Phthalo Green. Then this here is Kupu Kupu, <laughs> sorry, Kupu Kupu, which is a lime green. Here we have Nahele, that's a dark cobalt green. It's very granulating. Then Kohola, the synthetic indigo. Ice Queen, it's a pastel turquoise. Mango, medium cadmium yellow. And the bronze shimmer. Of course, and especially for today's painting, if you want to use a glitter jelly roll pen, this would be absolutely perfect because we're only going to do thin metallic shimmer lines today. So if you don't have shimmer watercolors, you can just use a metallic jelly roll pen. And then... The brushes, I have a new brush for you guys that we're going to use today. So you are already familiar with this one if you've watched previous live streams. This is a mop brush or quill brush, size 8. If you don't have this, you can just use a round brush. And I'm going to use the medium size, size 6 round brush. And then this is a bit of a different brush today. Look at this one. See how long it is? This is called a liner brush. I think it's also sometimes called a script brush because it's used for calligraphy a lot. So imagine a small round brush with longer bristles. That's all that it is. And it is tricky in the beginning. So if you use it because you need more control. However, when you use it a lot, you know, you get better. And then you can make lines really wonderfully with this one. So I'm going to demonstrate this later. We're going to use this one to apply the metallic watercolor lines in the end. So the rest, the background and the flower itself, we're just going to do with these two brushes. Actually, I could probably do the whole thing with my beloved size 8 mop brush. But um, for some smaller details, you know, it's always good to have a slightly smaller brush at hand too. Okay, I think this is it. We really only have um, paper, watercolors, and brushes today. Oh, hold on. A uh, pencil would be good. So, yeah. Usually I use a mechanical pencil, but I can't see it on my desk today so i'm just gonna use my uh, regular this is a black wing pencil and very very handy is the kneadable eraser you can just roll this over the paper and make the pencil lines become a bit more faint and light so they don't shine through your watercolor painting later all righty Hello, hello everybody. I'm just looking over to the chat. Okay, so just one more time, I'm gonna explain the steps of today's painting. You know, looking at this, I realize this is pretty green looking. So it's perfect for tomorrow's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Do we have any Irish people here or Irish ancestor people? Do you guys celebrate St. Patrick's Day? I have to say for me, it was a pretty new thing, which is weird because I grew up in Europe. So you'd think that this tradition would, you know, like be where I grew up. But 
honestly, it is way, way more prevalent that I, you know, live here now in Hawaii. So you go to Walmart or Target or any of the big stores that you also have in the uh, on the continent. Uh, and it's just all green and and Easter bunnies. So right now it's like a mix between Easter bunnies and green. <laughs> Mm. so hi linda yeah let me know you guys if you're gonna do something for saint patrick's day tomorrow because i think over here so we have family staying here right now so i think we might maybe do some dressing up in green and some dinner with corned beef or something something yummy we haven't really decided yet so let's see but anywho, let's start painting, shall we? First step will be to paint the background. It's going to be wet on wet so that we can create this really beautiful blends here. And we're going to leave the white space for the flower. Then we're going to paint the details of the flower. And in the last step for the non-shimmer part, we're going to add the leaves on top. Once everything is dry, we're going to add the shimmer lines. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to put this over here. Might want to zoom in a little bit. Alina says they have no fun holidays in Romania. No way. You have Christmas, right? I mean, you have to have Christmas. Else. Really? Nothing else? No Romanian holidays? Okay, you guys, hold on. Uh, Leo is here and he wants something. What do you want? Do you want to go outside? I can't play now. I'm, yeah. No, I'm painting. I can't play. Hey, you guys, I'm just going to let Leo go. Yes, that. <laughs> go outside. I, I'll, be, I'll be right back. I apologize. Okay, so you go outside. I am sorry about that <laughs> but you I mean if you've ever watched one of my live streams you know there's people coming bringing fish there are dogs coming in and out I mean you, you never know UPS guy UPS guy and dogs madly barking at him you never know what happens mm. Okay, let's get started with the flower. Oh, I was, of course, you know, wanting to show you a real Na'u or Nanu flower, but they're so rare. Um, and even if I had found one, you know, I would have not picked it because they are so rare. So they resemble gardenia flowers, but the petals are kind of wider you know a lot of gardenias have kind of skinny petals so that would be a big difference uh, in in looks and interestingly they have six petals so i think for a long time i thought that all flowers have just five petals or you know an uneven number but i was wrong i hope you can see that i'm i'm drawing pretty lightly let me go closer So I started with a circle, put the small circle in the center, and then I am drawing in the petals, six petals going around. So if you have trouble with the placement of the petals, think of your circle as a clock. So 12 o'clock, three, six, nine. So, and then before you start drawing your flower, um, and for example, if you have a reference photo, 
take your reference photo and just mark on your photo or you know in your mind looking at the photo where the petals end so 12 o'clock and this is like 1 30 and um, i don't know four o'clock six o'clock uh seven and nine in this case and then you can draw your circle fill in the numbers of the clock and then it might be easier for you to draw in your petals. So my petals are pointing at 12 and 2, 4, 6, 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock, going around like that. But honestly, I mean, uh, I've seen these flowers in real life and they, um, the petals are kind of winding and not super straight. So if you don't get the proportions totally right and even, um, I wouldn't worry about it at all. So from this drawing, I'm going to take away all unnecessary lines. And I drew in the numbers of the clock too. So I'm gonna remove those too. And I really only want a very fine, faint outline of my pencil sketch. Because as you all know, once you paint over pencil with watercolors, you can't erase the pencil line later. So you want to keep it really faint. Pick up some of your pencil line with the kneaded eraser just gently rolling it over your paper. If you like, you can also draw in the leaves of your flower or we can just eyeball it later. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm not gonna draw in the leaves here, but what we could do is just maybe make a few points For the tips of the leaves so I have kind of an idea where they will go later. So for the sake of proportion and placement it's always good to have some kind of a skeleton ready for your for your painting. All right ah I'm looking over at the chat and Alina likes the idea with the clock. <laughs> so you guys, if you check out my step-by-step -step tutorials on both the Aloha Studios website and the um, in my Aloha Watercolors website, then you can find a lot of flower tutorials step-by-step. -step. And I'm using this idea of the clock, the flower clock, a lot. So check out Tropical Flowers or Hawaiian Flowers, I think it's called, over on either of the two of my websites. And, you know, I have like um, different, different tropical flower step-by-steps over there. I'm going to leave a link later in my um, description, in my comments here. So you can find it. All right, I just have another dog that came in here, so <laughs> sorry, it's a bit... Huh? You. Hello. Hi, Mali. Oh, you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so go play. Next step, we're gonna grab some water. I'm gonna zoom out now again, because we're gonna do the background wash now. I have my mop brush, picking up some water. And I'm just laying down some plain clean water and I'm painting around my flower. So if this is too tricky for you because this is such a big brush, you can start with painting the background like this and then swap to a smaller brush to get the details. Yet another 
option is to paint the background like this while leaving the details for later. I hope this was clear. So what I'm saying is that if it's too tricky for you to get all the fine lines, the outlines of the flower with this big brush, then just lay down some water in the, you know, general <laughs> vicinity of the flower, drop in your color, and then while the color is blending, you can switch to a smaller brush and kind of push the paint in and paint the details around the flower. Because what we really want is to have a wet background here. It should be wet like all over so that we can drop in the paint and it blends beautifully. So you do have to work fairly quickly for this step so that your paper doesn't dry before you drop in the paint. And I wouldn't do too much mixing. You can really drop in your paint, drop, 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 and just let it blend by itself. Like this. And now I can demonstrate what I meant before, what I was referring to before. You can just take your smaller brush and then push the pigment to exactly the spot where you wanted to define the flower. But I'm just gonna do all of this with my big quill brush, mop brush here. One of our neighbors decided to switch on the leaf blower. I hope you can still hear me. Okay, and just drop in some of the different greens that you have. All around. I'm looking over at the chat. Here's my mom. Hi, mom. What's she saying? Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yep. And very special, beautiful white color is Hawaiian gardenia flower. Mm-hmm. And they not only look great, they also smell absolutely divine. So once you have a few of your green colors laid out like this, you want to pick up some of your darkest color. In my case, that's my synthetic indigo. Okay. And drop that in. And don't be afraid to drop this in really dark. What this will do is it'll emphasize the contrast between the white flower and the background even more. However, make sure that you don't make the whole background too dark because remember we want to paint our leaves on top of the background. So I encourage you to just drop in your really dark color in maybe two spots, two or three, really close to the petal to the petals, to the flower, like this. Rinse your brush, and then go back in and just very gently move your pigment around. 
I suggest to not overdo this, so don't do too much scrubbing. Because um, depending on how wet or dry your paper is, you might be able to see the, um, the brush strokes. So what, just very gently with a dabbing motion like this, you can mix your colors, mix and blend them. And what I'm doing now is with the tip of my brush, going back in and defining the lines of my gardenia flower here. The beauty about cotton paper is that it retains the moisture very well and it allows you to work on a background like this for quite a long time. And of course, the very humid climate here is also helping. So we usually have humidity between 85, you know, between 80 and 90 percent. So that keeps my paintings moist for quite a long time. If you live in a very dry climate or you're inside and it's very dry, you can always rinse your brush, pick up some water and gently drop in some water in those places where it already dried. Um, that way you can prevent the, uh, you know, the drying edges. So I feel as if this might be a bit too much indigo here. So I rinsed my brush and I dried it. I'm just picking up some of my indigo here. This is called the thirsty brush method. Thirsty brush. So you can see I picked up some paint. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm rinsing my brush, drying it. Doing the same over here. Just picking up some of my pigment here to lighten up the background. All right, we take a tip, a uh, sip of tea. Ooh. My iPad keeps going to sleep. So, okay, I just woke it up and I can look at the comments again. And mom is saying, oh yes, this flower smells absolutely divine. Kind of like uh, mm, Plumeria, Jasmine, they have this wonderful sweet floral scent. All right, so for the next step, it's really important that the background is a very dry. So I'm going to go and use the hair dryer to dry the background. A little bit of a warning here, if your background is still really wet, and especially if you have puddles of water on your paper, you should wait until those are gone and the water is, um, the paper is only moist because otherwise you might splatter the paint around with your hair dryer. Okay, good enough. All right, so I'll be right back.
Hello, I'm back. Gosh, I hope that leaf blower is not too loud for you guys. It's pretty loud for me, but I hope that maybe my phone is filtering it out somehow a little bit. Can you guys let me know? Is it is it really noisy or is it kind of like in the background for you? Yeah, Alina says it's okay, don't worry. I am glad. Okay, that's good to hear. Cuz it's really loud from, you know, my from my standpoint. <laughs> and Susan says, you live in a treehouse, it's expected. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's because we have only the, the screens and no windows. <laughs> oh, hi, Tanya. It's so lovely. I know I say this every time, but I love that you guys watch me every time in a live stream. I recognize all the names. That is so wonderful. Okay, next step. Mm, I was going to paint the flower next, but you know what, guys? Let's do the leaves first. So, the leaves here. You want to place the leaves in those spots that are a bit lighter. So, wherever you placed your darkest color, I'm going to suggest that you kind of paint the leaves, you know, um, around that darkest color. So just leave those dark spots dark and add a few leaves around your flower using different shades of green. So I'm still using my size 8 quill brush, but you can use another type of round brush for this. And you can even draw your leaves. You don't have to paint them in one stroke or two strokes like I'm doing here. But if you want to try, the method is always the same. You start with the tip of your brush like this, continue down, and then you press down harder so the whole belly of your brush touches the paper, and then you lift up again for the tip. So it's like touch down, press harder, lift up. Okay, so for the leaves to show up, make sure you use a bit of a thicker consistency of your paint. And this way, the leaves will show up even if you're using kind of a lighter color. So I'm using my lime green, just a little bit of water and a lot of pigment, a lot of paint. And this way, my leaves show up, but also you can see the background shine through a little bit. And I really love this effect. It looks mm, almost like there was some glass window and the flower is part of a window and you have the background shine through. For some variation of color, drop in one of your other greens while the paint is still wet. So in here, I'm going to drop in some Jade Vine Fidelo Turquoise into my lime green. Let's do it here. And then as you can see over here, my paint was already dry. So with my rinsed wet brush, I'm just gonna go back in and gently dab 
dab, dab, dab around on my leaf to blend these colors. Let's switch to another green. Gonna do Jade Vine, my Fidelo Turquoise. And as I said in the intro, you can also use another type of a transparent green. So Fidelo Green. Hey, I bet you guys, when I'm done with the live stream, my neighbor is also going to be done with the leaf blowing, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> oh, and another tip, just because I did it the other way, if you start from the flower going outwards, I think it's easier to control the shape and size of the leaf and the position because you know you can set down your brush exactly at this point where it touches the flower and then just kind of let go to create the pointy tip if you do it the other way around coming in to the flower you might accidentally paint into the flower a little bit too much. All right. And of course, you know, you can do this part as loosely as you want. I did controlled brush strokes for my leaves here, but you can just do this whole leaf thing here very loosely. Quick, quick strokes. If you like, you can also experiment with letting the background dry to the point where it's almost dry but not completely and work with some interesting blends here i'm dropping in some more different colors dab dab dabbing with my wet brush to blend them I dropped in a green dot here, so I'm just gonna work with that later when I add my metallic color. Maybe we'll just dot, dot, dot this leaf. Okay, let me add some green here to the tip. And here. Ooh, I think my neighbor is moving away with the leaf blower. Ah. <sighs> Maybe Saturday is not a good day. I kind of feel like they're doing this on Saturdays. Hey, question. Do you guys have designated days to do certain things? Like cleaning or leaf blowing? <laughs> you know, things you have to do around the house or your apartment or wherever you live. It's like, do you have certain days? So I do for certain things just so that I don't forget them or you know I don't forget to do them regularly like uh, let me see I wash my bed sheets every weekend like absolutely want to make sure I do that yeah. and then of course you know I have certain days that um, I do certain things just because I don't know that's kind of like in my schedule so, for example, for work, you know, certain Instagram posts, etc., they go live on, on certain days. So it's kind of like predetermined what I have to do there. But I think for, for things around the house, it's really helpful for me personally when I set specific days to do certain things. Like cleaning my studio, I also do on the weekend. And I really try to do it every week because messy, messy, messy if I don't do it. <laughs> so Tanya, Tanya's cleaning day is Thursday. Oh, you mean cleaning everything? Like cleaning the whole house, like vacuuming and, and everything? Oh my gosh, that would take me a week. <laughs> 
<laughs> so much to clean here. Um, and yes, Alina, I live in a treehouse. It is not, I think, strictly speaking, a treehouse in the sense that we're, we're not up in the tree. We are elevated, so the houses are on stilts and the trees are on eye level, kind of. But, you know, the, 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 the base of the house, at least partially, is still connected to the ground. If you want to, you know, you can look at photos of the treehouse when you go to, the, uh, to our Instagram. It's Treehouse Kona uh, on Instagram. And then you can see pictures. So, yes, I mean, it is absolutely fun to live in a treehouse in the jungle, but it's also incredible how much repairing, fixing, cleaning we have to do all the time. But, hey, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that if I didn't have days where I set up certain things I need to do, then I don't think anything would get done. <laughs> Okay, um, one more thing we can do in this step is to paint the center of the flower in yellow. Okay, I'm rinsing my brush because it still has green on it. Picking up a little bit on my yellow. And just dropping this into the center. I could also paint the shadows of my petals in this step, however, because some parts of the petal kind of go into the background and the surrounding area. I don't want to risk for everything to blend together. So I'm going to do another round with the hair dryer and I'll be right back. That's good. At least it's dry enough to add the shadows of the petals. So we are, of course, talking about a white flower. So you can basically choose the color of your shadow. You can choose any color to do that. And it's something that I like to do in blue because I think it, it creates kind of like this icy white feeling. Uh, I think we do a lot of times connect the color ice blue to white like snow or ice so i think it's a really good color to use for shadows when you want to paint something white but theoretically you could also use a different color so for today's example though i will be using this color ice queen which is a pastel turquoise if you don't have this kind of color, you can also use a diluted version of any kind of blue that you have. Or even if you have the Ftelo Turquoise, a very diluted version of this one would work very well too. If you work with a reference photo, take your reference photo and up the contrast or turn it into a black and white photo and augment the contrast so you can see exactly where the shadow and the light part of your flower and petals are. And then accordingly, you can add shadows to your petals. In my example here, I wanna make sure that we can distinguish all six petals from each other so I'm gonna make sure I drop in some shadows here in between 
or kind of like at the edge of every petal. So let's start with this one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this part a little better. I'm, I'm going to start with my top petal, drawing in this line here. And the best way to do this usually is to lay down a bit more pigment right where the line is, like this. And then you can rinse your brush and dry it. And then with your clean brush, gently move your pigment into the center of the petal. If you find that it's too dark, rinse your brush again, clean your brush, dab it on a paper towel or a cloth, and then just do the same thing. You just go over the area you already painted and dilute it towards the center of the petal. So what you want to see in the end is a fine, darker line right where the next petal starts and then a nice little gradient going towards the center of your petal. So a lot of flowers have petals that are kind of curly on the edges and we want to paint this as well. So for this one here, I'm going to have it curl like this. So it just means that the edges of the petals are curling inwards. And to emphasize that, you want to add a little bit of this light shadowy color along the edges where it curls. And again, towards that line or right by that line, it should be at its darkest and going towards the center of the petal, it should get lighter and lighter. So I just rinsed my brush again, picking up some of the darker pigment and just moving it gently towards the center. And make sure that the center of the petal is still white. If you paint the whole petal in this color, it might actually come across as the color of the petal. So I would always leave at least some part of the petal white so that the viewer knows that it is actually a white flower. Uh, can you hear that you guys? You can't hear it? Neither can I. And that is so wonderful because no more leaf blowing. Yay! <laughs> ah, it's so nice when you can only hear the birds. Ah. Well, and the dogs, <laughs> they never disappoint. <laughs> they always come up with some barking at some point. Okay, let's move on to the next petal. Again, I'm going to make it curl a little bit. And for some variety, it's going to curl a bit differently than this one. So this is going to curl on both sides, which means... We're going to add some paint all around where I just drew my line. And we're going to apply the very same technique as in petal number one. Rinsing my brush, drying it off a little bit, and then picking up some of my pigment and moving it towards the center. And for this one, I'm leaving white in the center and also down here. 
And again, if you feel that it's getting a bit too dark, that there is a bit too much color on paint, rinse your brush and dab it on, on your towel. And then you can pick up some of the paint. Rinse again, go back in, pick up some paint. All right. Moving on to the next one. It's going to curl just here on, on this side. All right, picking up some of my light turquoise. Mm, I think my brush was a little bit too dry. Okay, let's add a tiny bit more water. And please feel free for this step to use a much smaller brush. I'm still working with my size six brush, which is a bit, a little bit big, but it has such a great point. And I'm holding it kind of like this to utilize the point. So it works pretty well for me. But as I always say, use the supplies that suit you. It doesn't matter what I, like anybody else says or everybody says, you know, like this is the best. If it doesn't serve you, it's not the best for you. All right, I still think my lines here are a bit too harsh. I want it to blend better with my white. So I'm gonna go back in with my cleaned br clean brush and just rub around a little bit. If you're painting this on paper other than watercolor paint paper, you should be careful with this going back in and rubbing too much because you might make the paper start to pill or, you know, like destroy the paper at this point. So this lifting and rubbing technique really works best with thick designated watercolor paper. Okay, my iPad keeps going to sleep. I wanna keep an eye on the chat. Let me reopen my iPad and look at the chat. Okay. Oh, you guys have been quiet. Good, good. I assume it's because you're all painting along, alongside with me. Is that right? I hope so. So for this petal, it's only going to curl down here. So pretty much just the tip of the petal, which means we're going to only add a little bit here down at the bottom. All right, so I think I want to add some more paint over here so we have a better distinction between those two leaves. And it will also indicate that this leaf is on top of this one because it casts a shadow. So this leaf casts a shadow on this one here where they overlap. Again, I rinse my brush going back in to make the gradient more smooth. All right. So if this takes you a very long time, because this is watercolor, you can also do this later. So you might want to just try and lay down your paint first without overthinking it or without going in too much of a detail. And then once you painted all your leaves, you can go back in with a really fine brush and do the rubbing blending part. I think it really depends what your preference is. If you enjoy dealing with details like that, you might wanna go ahead and, and really focus on every leaf and or on every petal one by one. Or if you, you know, want to have like a quick painting session, you can finish 
laying down your light blue color first and then later work on the details. So today I'm doing one by one, one petal after the other, but usually my technique would be to paint them all in one go and then go back in. But again, this really also depends on the kind of paper you're using. If you're using regular paper, non-watercolor paper, I would suggest that you do everything in one, like uh, petal by petal. You don't want to risk the paper to dry and then damaging it when you go back in. And if you work with really high quality watercolor paper, you can just go around, do the whole thing first, and then fix the details later on. Okay, so the last petal here curls on both sides. I'm adding paint on both sides, rinsing my brush, drying it, and rub, 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 blend, 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 like this. So ideally, you would be able to first see that you have six distinctive petals and that they kind of curl in different sections like that. All right, I'm looking over at the chat and Linda wants a treehouse. <laughs> so question you guys, who of you had a tree house when they were young. Did any of you build a tree house of any kind? I don't know, in a, in a wood close by, or in, a, in a forest, or in the garden, in the yard, in your room? <laughs> but maybe a little fortress, not a tree house, but a fortress, or something of that sort. I had all sorts of caves going on when I was a kid caves going through my room it was impossible to enter my room I remember that. <laughs> mm. I mean I would build tunnels going through my room so not really a tree house I guess I didn't anticipate that until later so I did build a tree house when I was a young teenager but honestly, it was more like a few, a few, uh, how do you say, you know, pieces of wood stuck onto like two limbs of a tree, like very, very precariously. Nothing like in those cool novels where you have a tree house with a hanging ladder and you can roll it up and it's, you know, like only for, uh, for your friends and yourself and it's all secret and cool. Mm, no, nothing like that. <laughs> Okay, I can see that Alina made fortresses. Oh, out of snow. Ooh, yes, like an igloo. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we did that too. And tents out of blankets in the summer. Yeah. Oh my goodness, so similar. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Linda had a, oh my gosh, Linda had this treehouse with a password. You guys are so cool. I can see why we met here on Instagram and YouTube because <laughs> we share the love for treehouses and fortresses. Uh huh. I have a I have a little dog here now that just jumped up on my lap. Hello. Uh huh. So. Okay, Mali. Oh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm painting. Mm -hmm. Now she's chewing on my thumb. Hi, little puppy. Okay. Hi. Hi. Ow! <laughs> oh, 
Okay, you go. Go, go, go. You go. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, she licked my nose. Always does that. I should be warned, but I'm not, and she always gets me. Ah, yes, yes, Alina, I love the puppy too, but, but ah, they're everywhere. Whatever I do, they want to be part of it. <laughs> mm. Okay, and Kelly says she had a fort. Ooh, how cool. You guys are wonderful. I love that we all built fortresses and igloos and, and houses and tree houses when we were kids. It's wonderful. Honestly, I still want to do that. I never lost that. That kind of, you know, sense of adventure. I still have that a little bit at least. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Oh, so I really, I really appreciate, Mom, that you write everything in English. You know, my mom speaks fluent Japanese and German, but English, she's still practicing. I think it's wonderful, Mom, Taki, that you are so good with your English in this chat. Fabulous. And thank you. I love painting and I love demonstrating. So it's really just a joy for me to share this. Okay. And Kelly says, the new she shed. Yeah. Ooh, man cave and she shed. <laughs> <laughs> that is fabulous. You guys rock. Okay. I have to do a last round. I promise. This is the last round with the hair dryer. I'll be right back. dried pretty quickly excellent okay hello i'm back i'm back in the she shed du, 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 du. so for this part i am going to use my liner brush so remember i said it's like a round brush but the bristles are longer and what that does is like once you start drawing or painting your line it just when you when you have this stillness of your hand movement and you know you can, you're able to do consistent strokes it'll just creates it just creates the most wonderful line uh let's let's do a little exercise hold on i'm going to have a look if i can find a scrap piece of paper Oh, let's just use this one from the last live stream where we painted and practiced the hibiscus petals. All right. So, with the liner brush and my metallic paint, All right, set it down, tip down on the paper and just drag, drag your hand with a very straight movement like this. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> I know it's very tempting to just hold your breath when you do this, but it's actually good to do something like breathe in, tip down. And ah, let go. Leo, I can't play now, baby. No. Uh -oh. <coughs> Hi, Kaleo, Kaleo. Hi, Kaleo. Yeah. Where's your treat? I gave you a treat. Did you already eat it? 
you know, I have these two treats for these dogs that are supposed to last forever, and then they go through them in two seconds, I swear. All right, tip down and drag around like this. So what I'm doing is I'm moving my whole wrist, my whole hand. I'm not, try to not do a movement with just with your fingers. It's gonna be wonky. The more of your arm and your hand you can move and use like this, the straighter and more regular your line will be. See? Okay, so for the next line, just look at my arm and my hand. See how I'm moving the whole thing? This is for the straight lines. Now, of course, if you want to do something like a curved line, it's going to be a bit different because you have to create the curve. However, again, I'm pretty much moving my whole arm with the line. So I'm keeping my hand pretty much in, a, <laughs> in the same grip, I'm, or my fingers, I should say. And instead I'm using and moving my whole arm, my whole wrist. Now this is really tricky. When you've never used this brush, you've never done this kind of movement. And I get that. So if you don't feel up for this today, because you know it's evening where you're at, you're tired, you just want to get the metallic glitter shimmer paint down, by all means just use a glittery jelly roll pen. That's totally fine to create your lines. But I just uh, wanted to demonstrate how you can practice drawing lines with a liner brush if you are inclined to do so. Okay, let's apply the lines to our painting. And I'm going to wake up my iPad here too. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mom. Okay, liner brush, metallic shimmer paint. For as for consistency of this paint, don't make it too watery. You want kind of like um, gouache consistency to this paint. Pretty thick, pretty creamy. Like this. And then, because I'm a right-handed person, I'll start in the top left corner. If you're left-handed, you want to start on the opposite side. And if you can paint with both of your hands, then you are just so freaking lucky. <laughs> and I know this is a bit of a challenge because we're not just freely drawing lines on a white piece of paper. We're trying to catch the underlying shape of the leaf but honestly don't worry about it too much you don't have to get the line exactly on top of your leaf shape actually i think it might actually look really nice if you don't if you you know like put the line maybe a bit to the side like this i mean i like the look so why not and just like with our hibiscus painting in the last live stream, you can add a few stars for a galaxy effect here in the background. Make sure you don't add the stars in a too regular fashion. So you want to create a few clusters with more stars and then spread them out a little more in other areas. Okay, back to the leaf. And some dots here. Can you see all right? Should I move, uh, zoom in again? Or, or is this all right for you guys? Let me know in the comments. I kind of want to show you my hand movement as well, but if it's too far away, then I'm happy to zoom back in. 
Okay, Linda says she's got to run. Thank you for joining and have a great evening or best of your day. And I'm going to move to my next sleeve over here. So for this one, let's just do a whole outline of all the veins of the leaf. Okay, as you can see, I'm drawing pretty quickly. I have used this brush for a long time. It's because uh, I did calligraphy and lettering for years and years and years, even before I picked up watercolor again. So I'm very practiced uh, with using this brush. So please, please don't be frustrated if the brush doesn't work for you right away or if you struggle with this one. As I said, just use a regular round brush or another type of pen, whatever you have, whatever feels comfortable for you today. It's no pressure using the same stuff that I use. Just do what feels good for you. Adding a few more dots and stars inside and outside of my background. And you can also use another color here. I think silver would look wonderful, especially in those indigo areas. Okay. So before I do the other leaves down here, I'm gonna start with the petals here. Now for this part, as you can see, I'm working a bit more loosely in the sense that I'm don't I'm not pressing down as hard as I did as constant as I did with the leaves. I don't want to create a perfectly a perfect monoline for this, meaning it's the same width width. <laughs> I'm kind of more looking for a thicker and thinner outline here for the petals. So I'm kind of almost doing more of a dabbing, dabbing and drawing motion. So I think for this part now, I'm, I will zoom in a little more so you can see exactly what I mean for these differences between the leaves where I try to create a line that is consistent throughout but then when you look at the petal here this is much thicker and then runs out into it tapers out here into a finer line it's thicker here again and thinner so i think it really creates or it emphasizes the curly nature of these petals So just dab, dab, dab. It doesn't have to be a line that's connected all the way through either. You can just draw your line like this. So draw a little bit, leave a little space, dab in some paint like that. And you can replicate this effect with your jelly roll pen too, if that's what you're using. Just dot, 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 draw some more. And the last one here, again, you see, I just missed my edge here, but no worries. The shimmer at this point is both to emphasize the outlines, but also just a decorative element. So I wouldn't worry too much about getting everything right on point or, you know, right on top of your background. And then for the center, I added a circle and then kind of like a 
star here in the center like this. Okay, I'm going to zoom out again. All right. And continue with my leaves all around. Thank you, Debbie. I'm glad that you love it. Okay, um, we have three leaves left. So let's go back to trying to draw consistent lines. So same pressure throughout your line. Point down and apply the same amount of pressure. Right. And then for these ones, I'm lifting up a little bit towards the end like that. Down and up, down and up. This really is, if you're learning with this brush, just, just experiment with it. I think you'll get the, the hang of it pretty quickly. And if you don't, then hey, it's not the right brush for you. And if you don't love the brush, use the one that you love. But I think it's always good to at least try something new because, hey, who knows? You might be really good at that after a bit of a practice and then it might turn into your favorite brush. You never know, right? So you gotta try it. I think I really just always try and emphasize the point of, hey, if it just doesn't work right away, don't worry about it. If you have the shakes after having five cups of coffee, then also that's not the best first day to try out this brush. You want to be chill, relax. You know, I just realized this is actually not a good brush for little star dots because it bends too easily. So I think for the stars, it's actually smarter to have a brush with shorter bristles. Mm -hmm. See how much rounder these are with a shorter round brush. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I just found that out. <laughs> humongous stars I have here. <laughs> I think these are planets. Really large planets. Okay, and then if you like, if you want to have it look even more like stars in a galaxy, you can add some sparkly shimmer shine. To a few of your stars. Okay. Hmm. Let's do another one here. Hmm. I almost feel like grabbing a white jelly roll pen to add a few more stars. So I just did that white jelly roll pen and add a few more stars. All around, dot, 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 dot. Also trying to not dip my hand into the still wet paint. Okay. I still want to do something with my little dot here. You know, see the green dot that I dropped in here? So I'm going back to my liner brush, picking up some of my shimmer paint, and then I'm just going to add a few shimmery dots here to my leaf. And because I am using a very creamy consistency, or my paint has a very creamy consistency. It's super opaque and I'm actually able to cover 
this little accident here. All right, so looking at the whole composition, I think it's pretty balanced. I think maybe over here a few more dots, maybe even outside of my background, because we have a lot of dots and stars here and here. And somehow the lines of my leaves turned out thicker on this side and here as well. So to balance things out, I'm going to add a few more dots in this area. But yeah, I think overall, this is well balanced. It's definitely very shimmery. I hope you can see that. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm really liking this. And I also like that it's a bit different than the one I painted first. I think this has a bit more shimmer and star galaxy vibes going on. All right, you guys, I think this concludes today's live session. I hope you enjoyed painting along or just watching the stream. If you watch the stream later, then I hope you're loving it just as much. Um, as always, I'd be really thankful if you give the video a like, a thumbs up. Um, if you even have the time to leave a comment, that would be wonderful. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please do. <laughs> and I think there's also a bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video. Next week, for week four, my lovely co-host Rita will provide you with the step-by-step -step tutorial. And I've already seen it. It's glorious, of course. It's a bit tricky, but she breaks it down into really easy steps. Or, you know, manageable. I'm not going to say easy, because <laughs> it's Rita, so, you know, she knows how to do it. We're going to struggle a little bit, but hey, we can do it together. Next week, I'm not going to have a live stream because it's Rita's tutorial, but there will be possibly a live stream with Miss Nice Day, uh, Tanya. So I'm going to keep you guys updated. And the best way to stay in touch is, I think, on Instagram. So Instagram, Aloha Watercolors or the Aloha Studios. And um, you can also subscribe to my newsletter. So you find that link to my newsletter um, down here in the comment section of this video, or you can go to either of my websites or my Instagram, and I'll notify you about everything that's new, all the live streams and shop updates and all of that. All right. I wish you guys a wonderful weekend. If you celebrate St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, then happy St. Patrick's Day. And I'll see you next time. Aloha. Goodbye.